Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to part three. Uh, let's move to question number fifty-one. The carpal tunnel dimension increases with option A, reflection. Option B, in neutral. Option C, in extension. Option D, none. And answer is option A, reflection. Now let's move to question number fifty-two. There are dashed long bonds in hand. Option A, fifteen. Option B, seventeen. Option C, nineteen. Option D, twenty-two. And answer is. Option C, nineteen. Now let's move to question number fifty-three. There are dashed joints that make up the hand complex. Option A, seventeen. Option B, nineteen. Option C, twenty-one. Option D, twenty-seven. The answer is option C, twenty-one. Now let's move to question number fifty-four. The carpometacarpal joint of the little finger is having dashed degree of freedom. Option A, one. Option B two, option C three, option D none, and the answer is option B two. Now let's move to question number fifty-five. My left finger is due to option A contracture of F D F, option B rupture of collateral slip of extensor expansion, option C rupture of central slip of extensor expansion, option D rupture of volar plate, and the answer is. Option B, rupture of collateral slip of extensor expansion. Now let's move to question number fifty-six. Swan neck deformity is due to option A, contracture of extensor digitorum commissis. Option B, eccentric tightness. Option C, contracture of FTP. Option D, rupture or laxity of volar plate. And the answer is option D, rupture or laxity of volar plate. Now let's move to question number fifty-seven. Bottom layer deformity is due to option A contracture of FDS, option B rupture of central slip of the extensor expansion, option C contracture of extensor digitorum, option D rupture of, of the collateral slip of the extensor expansion, and the answer is option B rupture of central slip of the extensor expansion. Now let's move to question number fifty-eight. Intrinsic tightness is characterized by Option A: Increased DIP joint extension with PIP flexion than that with PIP joint extension. Option B: Increased IP joint flexion with MCP joint flexion than that with MCP joint extension. Option C: Increased IP joint flexion with wrist flexion than that with wrist extension. And option D: None. And the answer is. Option B: Increased IP joint flexion with MCP joint flexion than that with MCP joint extension. Now let's move to question number fifty-nine. Tightness oblique retinacular ligament is characterized by option A: Decreased DIP joint flexion with PIP flexion than that with PIP extension. Option B: Decreased DIP flexion with PIP extension than that with PIP flexion. Option C: Decreased IP joint flexion with MCP joint flexion than that with MCP joint extension. Option D: Decreased IP joint flexion with wrist flexion than that with wrist extension. And the answer is option B: Decreased DIP flexion with PIP extension than that with PIP flexion. Now let's move to question number sixty. The MCP joint is stable in. Option A: Semi flexion. Option B: Maximum flexion. Option C: Extension. Option D: Hyper extension. And the answer is option B: Maximum flexion. Now let's move to question number sixty-one. The capsule, the collateral ligaments, and the accessory collateral ligaments of of the MCP joint are taut in its close pack position, which is close pack position of the MCP joint. Option A: Forty degree of flexion. Option B maximum flexion. Option C neutral. Option D hyper extension. And the answer is option B maximum flexion. Now let's move to question number sixty-two. Hyper extension at IP joint of finger is said to be option A volar plate. Option B PDS. Option C tension of the skin. Option D collateral ligament. And the answer is option A volar plate. Now let's move to question number sixty-three. Inflammation of the sheet of the dash tendon within the sheet is referred as decutaneous disease. Option A: 
FPL and FPB. Option B, ERL and EPB. Option C, abductor policies long as and abductor policies previous. Option D, abductor policies long as and extensor policies previous. And the answer is Option D, abductor policies long as and extensor policies previous. Now let's move to question number 64. The space between dash and the dash is referred to as no man's land. Option A, PIP joint and DIP joint. Option B, MCP joint and PIP joint. Option C, MCP joint and DIP joint. Option D, wrist joint to MCP joint. And the answer is Option B, MCP joint and PIP joint. Now let's move to question number 65. Close back position for the wrist is Option A, neutral. Option B, full dorsiflexion with radial deviation. Option C, full flexion. Option D, 45 degree of dorsiflexion with ulnar deviation. And the answer is Option B, full dorsiflexion with radial deviation. Now let's move to question number 66. The transverse metacarpal arch increases with Option A, clinched fist. Option B, opening of the fist. Option C, thumb opposition. Option D, none. And the answer is Option C, thumb opposition. Now let's move to question number 67. During wrist extension, a distal carpal glides permanently. Option B, proximal carpals glides permanently. Option C, proximal carpal glide dorsally. Option B, proximal carpal supinates on radius. And the answer is Option B, proximal carpals glides permanently. Now let's move to question number 68. The capsular pattern of the wrist joint is Option A, more limitation of wrist extension than flexion. Option B, equal limitation of wrist extension and flexion. Option C, more limitation of wrist flexion and extension. Option D, more limitation of ulnar deviation than radial deviation. And the answer is Option B, equal limitation of the wrist extension and flexion. Now let's move to question number 69. The resting position for wrist is Option A, 30 degree of extension with radial deviation. Option B, 30 degree of extension with neutral deviation. Option C, neutral extension with slight ulnar deviation. Option D, 10 degrees of flexion. And the answer is Option C, neutral extension with slight ulnar deviation. Now let's move to question number 70. Combined motion of the MCP joint flexion includes Option A, dorsal gliding, pronation, ulnar deviation and distraction of the base of the proximal phalanx. Option B, palmar gliding, supination, ulnar deviation and approximation of the base of proximal phalanx on the metacarpal. Option C, dorsal gliding, supination, ulnar deviation and, and approximation of the base of the proximal phalanx. Option B, palmar gliding, pronation, radial deviation and distraction of the base of the proximal phalanx. And the answer is... Option B, palmar gliding, supination, ulnar deviation and approximation of the base of the proximal phalanx on the metacarpal. Now let's move to question number 71. The common motion of the IP flexion of fingers include Option A, dorsal glide, pronation, ulnar deviation and distraction of the more distal phalanx of the head of the proximal phalanx. Option B, the palmar glide, pronation, ulnar deviation Approximation of the distal phalanx on the head of the proximal phalanx. Option C, dorsal glide, supination, radial deviation, approximation, distal phalanx of the head of the proximal phalanx. Option D, palmar glide, supination, radial deviation, and distraction of more distal phalanx on the head of the proximal phalanx. And the answer is... Option C, dorsal glide, supination, radial deviation, approximation, distal phalanx of the head of the proximal phalanx. Now let's move to question number 72. A vascular necrosis of the scaphoid fracture occurs at Option A, proximal half Option B, distal half Option C, whole bone Option D, none of the above And the answer is Option A, proximal half Now let's move to question number 73. Reverse coris fracture is otherwise known as Option A, Broughton fracture. Option B, Smith's fracture. Option C, Gracely's fracture. Option D, Potts fracture. And the answer is Option B, Smith fracture. Now let's move to question number 74. Following extensor tendon repair in the hand 
ऑप्शन ए द इन्वॉल्व फिंगर इज ऑनली इमोबिलाइज ऑप्शन बी ऑल द फिंगर्स आर इमोबिलाइज ऑप्शन सी अजसन फिंगर्स आर इमोबिलाइज ऑप्शन डी नन ऑफ द अब एंड द आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी ऑल द फिंगर्स आर इमोबिलाइज नाउ लेट्स मूव टू क्वेश्चन नंबर 75 एंगल ऑफ इंक्लिनेशन ऑफ फीमर रेफर्स टू ऑप्शन ए नेक शाफ्ट एंगल इन सजेटल प्लेन ऑप्शन बी नेक शाफ्ट एंगल इन फ्रंटल प्लेन ऑप्शन सी नेक शाफ्ट एंगल इन ट्रांसवर्स प्लेन ऑप्शन डी नन एंड आंसर इज option b neck shaft angle in frontal plane so that's all for today if you have any doubts please do mention in the comment box i'll be back with next part till then bye bye thank you